My son Harvey is disabled. Caring for him can be challenging. But it's also really rewarding. So when comedian Frankie Boyle told an offensive joke about him, it made me really mad. Basically, he's saying, if you're disabled, you've lost the plot, you're aggressive, you're this, you're that, and you, you'll be unpredictable and you can do anything. Harvey can't defend himself, but I'm his mum, and I can. You really are fantastic. You are. That's why I'm standing up for Harvey, and people like him, to make sure they're treated with a bit of respect, just like the rest of us. I never planned to make a film about my nine-year-old son Harvey and all his medical issues. But when comedian Frankie Boyle told a disgusting joke about him on his show Tramadol Nights last December, I decided the only way to confront that kind of prejudice was to show what bringing up a disabled child is really like. Whatever you think of me, there's no way a little boy like Harvey deserved a joke like this. I'd rather not have to give it any more airtime. But without seeing it, you can't understand my anger. Apparently Jordan and Peter Andre are fighting each other over custody of Harvey. Well, eventually one of them will lose and have to keep him. <laughs> I have a theory that Jordan married a cage fighter because she needed someone strong enough to stop Harvey from fucking her. <laughs> When I saw it, I just thought, how can someone do that? It's horrific. How can that be aired? And how can anyone be so vulgar but an innocent child? And I thought, that's why I'm going to do something about this. So I got in touch with my lawyers and it went on from there. It wasn't just me who was outraged. The programme attracted around 500 complaints and the press were all over it. As a result, the TV regulator Ofcom launched an investigation. In April, they ruled that Channel 4 had broken the rules about broadcasting offensive material. But that's as far as it's gone. No one's actually apologised to Harvey. To me, that's wrong, and that's why I'm making this film. I'm not letting this drop. What I'm doing is protecting my son. What gives Frankie Boyle a right to basically slander my son, insult him, abuse him, bully him, why should he get away with it? Why is, where's the justice here? Just because he's a comedian, what gives him the right to get away with saying these words? People say, because I'm in the public eye, then it's, it should be acceptable that I should just take everything on the chin. I won't take it on the chin. It involves Harvey, an innocent child. What colour have you done your froggy's eyes today? Blue. you done blue eyes? Yeah. Wow. <coughs> He's obsessed with frogs. Over the years, I haven't tried to hide Harvey away, and he's occasionally appeared in my shows. But I have tried to keep his medical issues in the background. As a result, most people aren't really aware of what Harvey's condition actually involves. I think a lot of the general public just think Harvey is a big fat kid who's blind. Well, this is just the beginning. <laughs> just the beginning. But it's way more complicated than that. Harvey was born with a condition called septo-optic dysplasia. His brain developed in the wrong way, and it's the cause of all his medical and behavioural problems. Harvey typifies the condition of septo-optic dysplasia. He has the midline brain abnormalities with associated learning and behavioural difficulties. He has the uh, pituitary abnormalities and he has a visual problem. He's also autistic, so his mood swings and social skills aren't like us. He's also got a condition called diabetes insipitus. And the only way I can explain that, it means that he's got a continual thirst. He can't regulate how much he drinks in his body. We didn't know any of this when Harvey was born. He seemed like a perfectly healthy baby boy. But at six weeks, that all changed. His six weeks check, they flashed a torch in his eyes 
and she sort of, and I remember it, she went, hmm, he doesn't really seem to be following the light. He was a strong, healthy baby, was born at a strong weight, brilliant. Then the story changes and, you know, you have to brace yourself for that. You're, you're, you're geared up for a healthy born baby and then all of a sudden you find out his eyes aren't working, he's blind. Well, I was really upset, I remember crying over it, but you can't just crumble because you've got to deal with it and that's what we did. But it was awful. It took me months to get over it. Well, I didn't get over it. You never do. I'll just be, but if they you said if it develops as it is now, <coughs> if he walked into a room where there's loads of people, he wouldn't actually fall over and he'd walk round. So them. he's going to be registered blind, which well, means so blind what? with a stick. No. Yeah, she said he would need a stick. Only he may feel more comfortable with a stick. No, she said he would need. He's registered blind, not partially blind. Blind. Just as we were getting our heads around Harvey being blind, we started to notice other problems. At one time, Kate and I were feeding him 13 bottles a night. We just could not satisfy his, his hunger. Hey. You are good. Oh, what a good boy. He was eating, you know, you think, that's good. But he was getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and it was absolutely awful because we couldn't get the right help. And then we went to see Dr... Detani. When we first saw Harvey, it was clear that he was at high risk of having other hormonal problems. His MRI scan was certainly abnormal and the pituitary gland was abnormal within that. Where is it? <laughs> and we therefore put him through some very intensive tests at that stage and diagnosed that most of his pituitary gland was uh, abnormal and that's why, that is why he needs a hormone replacement now. So when people look at Harvey, I hope now they they would take back of calling him a fat kid and saying that I feed him up because he's actually like it because of his medical problem and the medicine he takes. So he's actually got a lot of problems, but people don't realise that. Because Harvey's pituitary gland doesn't work properly, he needs to take five different medications all through the day. He'll be on them for life. Love you, Harvey. Love you, Harvey. Love you. I'm like a human alarm clock without a watch on. I suddenly go, oh, Harvey's meds time. But now I've just looked. He has it at 8 o'clock. It's 12 minutes past 8. He's due his meds, so I've got to go and do that. He has medication 7 a.m., 8 o'clock, 12.30, 2 o'clock, 4.30 and 8 o'clock. Every day. So he's now due for his evening meds, which consists of two um, oral and one injection, which I should go and do now because it's 12 minutes past. And if I don't do it, then he'll wet his nappy and wet through, and it's dangerous. Without his medication, Harvey would die. He needs his meds. End of. So, let's go and do his meds. Not that he's going to pop off that quick because I'm not doing them now. And then I'll be down. Hopefully he's not awake. I've always said that he'll, he'll probably live with me for life and I'm very strong about that. It's easy for me to say because I've got the money, yeah, put him in a home, you deal with him, I'll see him at weekends. I won't do that. There's just no way I'll do that. There's no way Harvey's going anywhere. He's staying put. Frankie Boyle clearly doesn't have a clue about any of this. That's why I want to meet him, to get him to understand some of the realities of life with a disabled child. I got my production team to invite him on this show to see if he'd talk about his material that he uses on stage and especially the comments he made about Harvey. Basically a right to reply, because obviously I'm looking for an apology. And we got 
a point blank no. So maybe tomorrow send another letter. We'll just have to see that what the response is. I'm not happy about a joke which aired on national TV about my son Harvey and his disabilities. Anyone who has to live with disability knows it's not a laughing matter. In his short life, Harvey's had to put up with a hell of a lot of hospital visits and he never complains about any of them. Today's one of his regular checkups at Moorfields Eye Hospital in London. Three steps, one, two, three. So how's Harvey since we, we saw him last? His drawing is like really accurate and detailed. Harvey, I'll get you. Can one. we just have a look at this? What what colour did you draw that there? A frog. Your frog. What colour's the frog? Green. Oh, well done. What colour's the mouth? Pink. Let's have a look at another one. What's that colour at the top of the rainbow? Red. And orange, the next one? Orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Amazing. I wouldn't have expected him to see that colours well before. Done. Yeah. Well done, Harvey. Oh, it's fantastic. Very good. You're a very good drawer, aren't you? Very good drawer. Why well, you just to follow this around? Where's my where's my light? Where's that gone? Oh, very good. Where's that gone? Very good. Where's that gone? Oh, you're good at this. Where's that gone? Good. What colour's that? Red, blue, green. Yeah, you know your colours so well, don't you? Do you think the wobble's got less as he's got older? Do you know what? When he's when he gets in a bad mood or he's thinking about something, they go quicker. Oh. So any mummy talking? Yes. But generally, I'd say it's they've calmed down. But when he is in a mood or yeah. thinking, then they go more. Yeah. Good. Harvey, this is my funny hat. Oh. I, can see, I can see right through to the back of your eye with this. Let me have a look. See your nerve. I can see what you had for breakfast. What did you have for breakfast? Weetabix. It doesn't look like... Are you sure it was Weetabix? Mum, did he have Weetabix for breakfast? Toast. Yeah, it was just toast, wasn't it? Well done. Uh -huh. Well done, Harvey. Well done, Harvey. He sees... As six metres from the child, <laughs> what a normal child would see from 60 metres away. What we'd expect at the age Harvey is now is that the vision will be stable at this level. It shouldn't get any worse. <laughs> is there, is there any but he'll get, better at, he'll get better at using his residual vision as he gets older. Yeah. Thank you, Professor. OK, well, Michael, nice to see you. Cheers. Nice to you see you. Thanks very much. Have a good trip back, Harvey. Well yeah, done today. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. With Harvey, he's been able to learn you know, with help from his teachers, to, to use the residual vision perhaps better than we might have expected. In a child with Harvey's vision, who was otherwise completely normal, they would live a very full life and, and there were many jobs they could, they could do and they would live completely independently. So the limiting factor in Harvey being able to live independently is not his eyesight, it, it will be his other problems. When Harvey's older, I'd, I'd love to say he can have a simple job like... Um, stacking shelves or something at a supermarket. There'd be something Harvey can do that is useful for somebody. People have got to remember, it doesn't matter what job you do. It doesn't matter. If you're earning money, you're, you're doing a service for somebody and you're earning money and you walk home with a paycheck and the most rewarding thing anyone can do, whatever job you do, is getting your cheque and going, do you know what, I've earned that. It's a month since the broadcasting regulator Ofcom's ruling about the joke and I've just had a letter from Jeremy Hunt, the Secretary of State for Culture and Media, saying he's on my side. The issue's still getting lots of coverage too. Join in London's biggest conversation. Call Nick Ferrari at breakfast. Culture Secretary Jeremy Hunt has told Jordan of his, quote, deep disappointment because Channel 4 have refused to apologise for Frankie Boyle's shocking joke about her disabled son, Harvey. Sheila's in Harry on the radio. Sheila, good morning. Good morning, Nick. Honestly, I'm not a, an aggressive person uh, normally, but if I could see that man now, I would, I would, oh, I don't know what I would do. Credit to Katie Price. She's very savvy. Good luck. I hope it's causing as many problems as it possibly can over at Channel 4. Who choose to employ people like Frankie Boyle? This is LBC. Nick Ferrari, who presented the phone-in show on LBC, has agreed to have a chat with me about it. So what made this be a topic on your show? Oh, it's got pretty much everything. It's got a big name, uh, it's got uh, a, a television company caught in an ugly row, 
uh, and it's got a very, very important theme of disability and how we deal yeah. with it. And my job is to pick stories that people want to get involved in. I didn't have anybody supporting the gag, not one, which is very rare. And it was really interesting listening to p people's different views and you for actually sticking up for me as well and obviously for Harvey and, you know, and I'm not letting this drop. What will make you think you've achieved something with what you're doing with your campaign and with this show? Basically, I want an apology from him and to make people think again about what they're saying. Why have you taken the crusade on so much? Why do you feel this so keenly? One, because I'm a mother. And number two, it's for my son who can't even defend himself. He wouldn't even know that Frankie Boyle's even made these comments. And I can't understand a channel like Channel 4. They're covering the Paralympics. But on the other hand, they have a comedian on their show. Not just taking the mick out of disabilities, but pinpointing my son. So if he was a fit boy, yeah. and there would be jokes people could do yeah. about Jordan and her kid, yeah. and da da da. Would it be all right then, Kate? Or is it because he's blind, he's autistic? And I think mainly because he's... Well, anyone who will take it, say anything about my kids, obviously I would argue the fact. But I think especially in this case, he was purely making them remarks about his disability and, in fact, about anyone with a disability to say that... Well, I can say the words, and to say they're going to fuck their mother. If he actually met Harvey and actually knew, you know, what goes on, I bet he wouldn't do that, and I bet his kids would be disgusted. You know, I'm just... An apology is all I wanted. I'd like that apology face to face, or at least to sit down with him and talk about why he thinks it's OK to make those jokes. I've sent another request and I got a quick reply this time, within 40 minutes, basically the same thing. He's not interested in me to me, not interested in coming in the show, not interested in apologising, nothing. So um, I'm still going to try again. Third time lucky. One of the hardest things to cope with about Harvey is his autism. Everything has to follow a rigid routine or it sends him into a total tailspin. I'm lucky that I get a lot of help from my mum. She's in charge of getting Harvey up in the morning and off to school. Harvey's routine in the morning, the nanny knocks on his door in her own particular knock. The nanny goes into his bedroom and says, right, Harvey, you know, do you want to go to the toilet? Do you want to wash your teeth first? Do you want to get dressed first? Well, good morning. Hello. We're going to go in and do your board. And then, is that number one? <sighs> Toilet. It is, yes. <gasps> ah, here it is. There it is, on the board then. Teeth. <laughs> he will get dressed, hopefully, himself. You have to get the shirt and the jumper uh, ruffled up so he could get it over his head. We'll lay out the clothes in a particular order that he wants, or that he's used to. If it changes, then he'll kick off. You get dressed, Harvey. If he doesn't want to get dressed, he will throw the clothes and he will go and pee in the corner because he knows he's, he's doing it because he doesn't want to go to school and he's having a pop at yourself, really. I don't go up to his bedroom. Um... With Kate, she mustn't come out of her bedroom because, say, as soon as Harvey hears Kate, you, it's impossible to get him to school because he wants to stay with her. And his medication, which would be the cortisol, uh, the DDVAP and the thyroxine, he gives that to himself orally. If you're in a rush in the morning, for example, and you're like, come on, kids, put your uniform on, come on, we've got to go, get in the car, come on, come on. You can't do that with Harvey. You can never do that with Harvey. Just cross. You want a cross? Yeah. Like that one? Thank you. And he will count the squares, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's good. And they'll eat them. Try it. It's good. We keep a book every day and it lists what he has to drink, what he has to eat, what his weight is how much he's been to the toilet. So I've got a snapshot of what he's been doing every day. Like, say, for instance, he was going to be rushed into hospital now. We could say, right, this is what he's been doing, this is the medication he's had, this is what he's had to eat this morning, and this is what he's had to drink this morning. So we know, <clears> at <throat> any one time, what, where Harvey is at. Harvey's routine, obviously, has to be like that because he's autistic. 
you have to watch him all the time. Is he tired? Is he behaving bad because he's behaving bad? Because, believe me, when Harvey's medicines are all in line and everything is balanced, he can be just a naughty boy, like any other child. And But he can also be great fun, like any other child. Harvey goes to a school that caters for children who are blind and also have learning disabilities. Specialist education for children like Harvey is really important. There's no way Harvey could cope in a mainstream school, but here he's been able to develop in ways we never imagined he would. Yay! Harvey's schools went absolutely brilliant all throughout his life. He's got a speech therapist, music teacher, he does his maths. You know, he still learns different subjects, but obviously in a different way that an able kid would at a, a school, you know, without disabilities. Um, considering I never thought he'd even see, he, he knows he could do his alphabet, he can write his name, he can write other words. So to me, it's fantastic, he's come on really well. Harvey's school is run by the Royal London Society for Blind People. They were one of the charities who immediately complained to Ofcom about what Frankie Boyle had said on his show. Well, let's be grateful that Harvey doesn't know the relevance yeah. of the joke and won't have to live with that scar. I have no doubt uh, from knowing him that you have a very special young mm. person here who's going to grow up to be something very special. Yeah? Yeah. And my advice is don't get knocked sideways yeah. by people like Frankie Boyle. Society will take care of that. Yeah. I guess there was two aspects to um, to, to the way he was doing it. One was that you are obviously a quite a public figure, so he was going to have a go at you, which I suppose you would accept yeah, as, par as part of your brand, so to speak. Yeah. But the second thing was that to uh, make a, a comment that not only was about a disabled young person, but was also um, had sexual connotations to it, drives the whole thing, what I would say is beyond the pale. And it made me extraordinarily angry that a, a television station is able to um, allow something like this through. Following Frankie Boyle's joke being aired, the RLSB commissioned a survey which showed that 85% of people polled don't find comedy about disability either funny or acceptable. Of course, we carried out research of over a thousand people and over 85% just don't like this type of humour. Mm. I think probably the worrying thing that comes out of that is that 15% of people are ambivalent to the fact that it, that it occurs. Um, so, you know, we're always going to have a bit of a job to do, um, and I don't suppose you're ever going to get 100%. So I have to speak out, I have to do something, because it's not acceptable. I would hope you would, and we're going to support you in seeking that apology. Let's hope we achieve what I want to achieve. We, well, let's make a difference. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Ever since Frankie Boyle made his vile joke about my son Harvey, I've been after an apology. So far, it's been a brick wall. Our story with Harvey isn't unique. Any family with a disabled child goes through what we go through every single day and most of them without all the resources I'm lucky enough to have. When Harvey was a baby, we got to know some other families whose kids had the same condition. I've invited them over to mine for a catch-up. Use your words. We've got all the people here to see Harvey. That's what, sit down, Mummy. Who's this? You know who this is. Who's that? Oh, here we go. Do you want people here or do you want people to go away? People to go away. <laughs> really, he's not sociable at all. But Jamie's like that. He says to people when they come round, when are you going now? <laughs> I don't know whether you do with Harvey. If he's hydrocortisone slightly out of sync, do you find his behaviour's yes, a bit more manic? Yes, I was saying that uh, the medicine. Big time. Big, big it time. could be a small bit and it changes mm. him. Yeah. And that's what he's like at the moment. The and toy it's toy trying to be sort of like giving him... Um, your toy box. A dose and a half. Whole Just because it's heart. different coming here and he was a bit hyper, but I think maybe I should have given him double. <laughs> right, listen, listen, do you want to draw a frog? Can we take your pets away? 
Right, no dinner. In a situation he's not used to, the tiniest thing can set Harvey off. And it's like you have to play the guessing game with him all the time. You have to be a step ahead of him. Like, if you know a door's going to bang, you have to say, Harvey, the door's going to bang. You know, because if you... Just little things like that would trigger him off. Right, calm down. Oh, oh, oh. Listen. Oh, oh, oh. Listen, listen. Look, look at Mummy. Yay. It was only the door. Right, so no more door. No, no, no more door. door. Right. Sorry, Harvey. My fault. Yeah. Listen, 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 listen. There we go. Do you want to draw Froggy yeah. or no Froggy? And do Froggy. Right, you're going to be a good boy? Yeah. Right, go on then. Mummy? Yes? Where are we going Saturday, Mummy? Oh, God, here we go. Satan's face and he wants a cake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing this show because of Frankie Boyle. I'm basically saying that I, um, the reason I married a cage fighter was, was to stop Harvey from fucking me. Uh, it's like, exactly, and I, it was like, whether you're disabled or not, any, saying that about any child, any child fucking yeah. their mother. I say to him, spend a week in our shoes, see what it's like having to deal with a child that's got the conditions that our kids have got, and then tell me, you know, if you find a joke like that funny. Exactly. Yeah. Until you've got a child with disabilities or an adult, people just think, oh, they just put them in the wheelchair and just... They just see the kids and, and stare. Yeah. amount of times I've got very close to turning around and telling people exactly where to go. Oh, I do. Especially when it was that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised you don't tell them. So I bet if you oh, say Zach, they're turn, right turn. <laughs> so wallop, wallop. Yeah, no, I bet if you say Zach, they're looking at And Zach, because he's in ter terminal, I'll say, have you got a problem looking at me? Imagine if he says that. Yes. He Does he? Was born this way. What's your excuse? Oh, yes. Yeah. Does he? Yeah. Well, that is it's brilliant. It's 50p if you want to take a picture. Or... <laughs> Does he? Oh, hell yeah. What they need is a lot more acceptance from the general public out there. And their wants in life are exactly the same as anybody else's. They want to be happy. You know, they want to be loved. And, you know, they want to have a future. And I think some ignorance from some people can give that barrier that they then feel as if they can't go and do certain things or they might be too scared to go out and do something because who's going to be shouting names at me this time? We went to the park recently and he, there were some other boys playing and he wanted to go and play and he spoke to them, he was blanked and really? then Jamie stood there crying and he said, I'm, a, I'm just a normal boy like you, yeah. I just want to play. But they're they still... Say, really? They just snub him as if he's invisible. The children sometimes don't know any difference, do they? And yet if they right. see the way that their parents react to yeah, a yeah, child or even another exactly adult who's got not. disability, exactly. do you know what I mean? It's, it yeah. does annoy me because sometimes the parents would be there staring. Or if he's yeah. having a hissy fit. I think it, it almost isolates you because people don't accept different behaviours, challenging behaviours. They just assume that these children are naughty and we're bad parents. And it's got nothing to do with that. Um, it's a hard life, but rewarding. Oh, here he is! Hey. Hello. What have you got? It's crispy. Mm. What nice. colour are they? Oh. Yeah. <gasps> wow, what shapes? Triangle. Well done! Bam! Oh. Yes. Yay! <laughs> are you going to eat them all? Yeah. Yeah, he loves it. I was just If you're so rewarding. Mm -hmm. Right, two more and that is it! Until you're... Dinner! That's right. <laughs> I get angry now. Right, give the bowl to mummy now. You've got to have your dinner. Good boy. Oh, well done. Thank well done. you. That's good really good. I don't want to just start walking. No, no, you might think <laughs> <laughs> Use your words. OK. You want to go on the trampoline? No, mummy. OK. I'm interested in what other people who work with disability think of jokes like the one Frankie Boyle told about Harvey. Mencap is the leading charity that campaigns on behalf of people with learning disabilities. The Frankie Boyle jokes. I wouldn't even call jokes, I would just call bullying. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And it's, I don't, you know, I don't mind people making jokes at me, but what infuriated me, we're, we're talking about a nine-year-old boy who doesn't even know, doesn't even really know, like, he only, he's only in his own world. He has no idea this guy has taken the mickey out of him. Is he trying to say that people with disabilities, you know, they'll just go, out, go around and rape people or 
I, I just, I just don't know what was funny about it and what would, what, I don't know. From my perspective, it wasn't a joke. It really was bullying and it was, um, it was disappointingly shocking. It was mm. sort of really not something that we want to see on television uh, and it was targeting a child an individual like yeah. you say and you know how it felt you've yeah, described yeah. the feelings that you have about that but it was also attributing um, behavior to disability that was pretty yeah. despicable so exactly. it was a, it was saying that if you have a disability you're likely to be a predator you're likely to attack people but you can have humor around disability you can have humor about dif you know what might be yeah. perceived to be sensitive issues um, especially when stereotypes are exposed and we learn something when, and you know people are made to think yeah that this wasn't that and I think a really important point to make is how one thing leads to another. Yeah. So, you know, people might say this is a joke, uh, we're pushing the boundaries. I think that's a cop-out uh, for I Channel do. 4 to say we're pushing the boundaries. Uh, because we know with jokes that jokes can lead to taunting, can lead to people being really seriously harassed. Uh, and there was a case, I don't know if you heard about this, in 2007, a woman called Fiona Pilkington killed herself and her daughter Francesca. No. So what started with neighbours making sort of nasty comments, mm. what they thought were jokes, yeah. got worse and worse, escalated, and life just became unbearable. So that's where we'd like to say, you know, this can get really serious and out of hand and yeah. it is as though it's acceptable to, st to pick on people with disability in a way that it isn't to pick on other people and that really bothers us and that's a message it we does. want to get out. Mencap runs support groups for young people with learning disabilities. I want to meet some of them to hear how they get treated. Hi. Hello. What are people like towards you? Somebody in my school, so nasty and been horrible to me. And my mum got frightened. And um, she phoned the police and where's that little boy? Because it's a bully. What about you, Alistair? I bet no one's mean to you, are they? Well, I see. bet you'll tell, them, you'll tell them off. Telling the truth, I've been bullied as well. Have you? What happened? Some of her boys I know try to pick on me, like, calling me names. Uh, yes, I did get hurt. It's not mm. nice. And what do you say back to the people who were horrible to you? I might put them in prison. Oh. Well, let's hope no one else is horrible to you. Because you seem a nice person to me. Aren't you? Yes, I am. You seem a very nice person. Thank you. Ah. Oh. What would you like to say to all these people who are horrible? I think it's really wrong. And if someone's been horrible to you, it is actually quite hard not to get involved, you know. But sometimes I do get involved and it's not yeah. good. Sometimes I get aggressive against them. So you get angry quick, do you? Yes. I can't help it. It's my rage that can control. Because my son, Harvey, he does that. He gets angry really quickly. And he can't explain to me why he gets angry. Can you control it when you get angry or do you just... I, I just can't. You can't? I can't help it. But I'm sure that's something you're working on, is it? Yes, I am. Well, that's good. Has anyone made any horrible jokes to you? For a joke, they might say that I look, I look, I look ugly and I look, I look really scruffy and horrible. And I'll say to them, I know that's a joke, and, and I don't believe you. And I am, I am nice, and I, I'm not ugly. And... That's good, because you're right, isn't she? Yeah. My friend, he does my makeup a lot when I go out. I could get him to do your makeup good and your hair and make you look really, really glamorous. Oh, yeah. Would you like that? I would love that. We'll have to do that. You won't recognise her. Hey. <laughs> you won't recognise me. <laughs> Don't be like, be like, a, like a new person. You feel like a princess. Oh, yes. I've just met some young people with disabilities. That's it. Oh, they've been bullied, they've had jokes said about them, but you can see they're trying to get on with their lives. But you can see they've had some hurt and it's cruel. It is cruel, there are some cruel people out there. This is exactly why I'm so keen to meet Frankie to get him to see why jokes about disability do so much harm. But I've just had yet another rejection. 
they're just totally not interested whatsoever. So I take it it's a no, 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 no. He won't be coming on the show and he's just not interested. So it just sums him up. Over the past few weeks, I've been trying to make sense of how a spiteful, horrible joke about my son Harvey was allowed to go out on national television. What I really want is to meet the man who made the joke, Frankie Boyle, but he keeps turning me down. In the meantime, what do other comedians think about the joke? <laughs> Olivia Lee is best known for her hidden camera show, Dirty Sexy Funny, on Comedy Central, and she's agreed to meet me to talk about it. Don't get me wrong, I can take the piss out of things and, you know, we all can. And to be a comedian, it's good to be shocking and stuff. But where is the humour in that joke? I don't think it's laugh out loud funny at all, but I think Frankie Boyle's brand of comedy is to shock. Yeah. You know, he just says the unthinkable, he says the unsayable, and that's what he's carved a career doing. But then I totally understand your point of view, which is like, well, that's not funny. If it's supposed to be comedy, it's not a laugh out loud joke. It's a, oh, my God, did he say that? I think a comedian's more funny when they don't have to stoop that low for shock value. Yeah. I think you're more clever if you can be funny without having to do that. But then comedians sell on the shock value, and that's the point, is that certain comedians are funny. Michael McIntyre has to be funny. He's not trying to shock. Peter Kay, observational, funny. And then you've got the Frankie Bars of the world. They want to shock. I hate anyone who takes the, the mickey out of anyone for disability because it can happen to anyone, you but know. Comedy is predicated on yeah. people taking the piss out of each other. It's like that playground mentality, like, you're this, you're that, no, you're that. And when you see Which it on the panel fine. shows, yeah, yeah. men are competing and they're putting each other down. But when it comes quite personal, like, even if um, Harvey wasn't my son, saying that about any child, yeah. you know, what I'm saying, he's basically saying because he's got disabilities more likely to rape you. You know, comedy is the one arena where you can be provocative. It's freedom of speech, isn't it? When you're a comedian, you're kind of like an orator. You're standing there on stage and you're giving your view of the world. So, it, yeah, it's more like it, it creates that sense in society. Maybe I should become a comedian because there's so many things I want to say for my speech. But every time I do, I get legal letters. <laughs> But if I say well, I'm going to become a comedian, I can go on stage yeah, and get away can. with it. You can get away with it. Isn't that, exactly. isn't, I don't understand why that's, you know, what he said is shocking. If he wasn't doing what he was doing, you know, if he wasn't a comedian, he had said that in an interview, you'd, you'd probably go for him. See, the thing is, I just see it as material. I don't see it as being, I don't, he doesn't mean it. You don't you know, think? He, no, he doesn't mean... Of course he doesn't mean it. It's ludicrous to think that that is the case. That's his brand of comedy, whether it's you or whether it's Joe Bloggs or whether it's someone that's... So what deceased. if his wife had a car crash, got paralysed from the neck down? Do you think he'd take the piss down? Eventually, end? yeah. I think he so would... you really think he's that... I really because I think shock it's shock value. I feel sorry for his wife. Then. But it's a <laughs> business... Does. It's the same way you heighten parts of your... You know, you had Jordan... You know, that that was a heightened yeah, version of you. Yeah, today? I shouldn't have been out for a while. <laughs> <laughs> so is it enough to say it's OK because he didn't mean it? Victoria Wright, star of comedy series Cast Offs, has a condition called cherubism. If anyone can see both sides of the argument, she can. She was joked about herself by a bunch of comedians on the radio. I think the common thing about these people like Frankie Boyle and, you know, the comedians that made fun of me and other comedians mm. that are here making these kind of yeah. disability jokes all have the same thing in common, which is that they are white, um, probably heterosexual, uh, yeah. quite wealthy men who have never experienced bigotry, have never yeah. experienced prejudice and discrimination themselves. So yeah. they don't know what it's like and maybe they don't care. How does it feel when you're on the receiving end of the bullion? It's, um, it's hurtful. I wrote a letter of complaint to the managing director of this radio station. And although I did get a letter of apology from the managing director of that station, it was meaningless. No. They made more jokes. Um, no respect. One of them had said, uh, oh, it's really good she didn't complain. That makes her a bigger person than you, at least head-wise. So make no. a joke about me having a big head. Ha, ha, ha. And how does that make you feel? It really upset me. Because, you know, having these very well-known comedians, mm. you know, really make very cruel jokes about my appearance and knowing that hundreds of thousands of people had heard them 
and, and it made me worry about my safety as well because I wondered if I was going to go out the street and have people shout the same yeah. comments that these comedians had made and, and I have had that mm. uh, a couple of times and I and I you know wondered well, I wonder if that's because they picked it up from that right. radio show and it made me feel powerless you know a lot of comedians at the moment think that being offensive makes them brave and makes them courageous uh, but to my mind it doesn't I think brave and courageous humour is when kind of weak people make jokes about powerful people mm. you know for me that that's witty and that is brave mm. and that's really gutsy humour but when powerful people like Frankie Boyle make jokes about people like Harvey, mm. that's not brave, that's not courageous. It's no different from being a kid in a playground and bullying exactly. a child. You know, I, I, there's nothing gutsy in that. It's been six months since Frankie Boyle made his comment he did about Harvey. So during that time, I've made free requests to him for an apology or to meet me and I've just had flat nose each time. I don't know the reason why he won't meet me, why he won't apologise to me, why out of respect even for Harvey he won't do it. I hope that one day he sees this documentary about Harvey. Actually in fact I'll probably send him one myself through the post so he gets a copy just so he can see what I have to go through with Harvey and what other people have to go through with their disabilities and it might make him realise not to make remarks like that again. Whatever happens, I know how special Harvey is and I wouldn't change him for the world. He's a great bundle of fun and, you know, you just get so involved in him as a character. ABC's next song, won't you sing with me? That he can now say, um, hello, Uncle Dan Dan. <laughs> you learn so much from a disabled child. Well, we, I have, and I'm certain Kate has. You have an empathy with people a lot more. It puts life in perspective, and it makes you appreciate life for what it is, really. And you would never think that a disabled child like Harvey could do all that. Harvey's my son. We have good days, bad days. Would you, Harvey? Funny days. Challenging days. <laughs> he can draw better than me. His memory is amazing. But we have to take each day as it is with Harvey because no one can predict the future. Regardless of what anyone says, I love him to bits and he's perfect to me. Don't come, baby, cradle and old. Oh, that's fantastic, isn't it? That's so good seeing Harvey Price. For more information about the issues raised in this programme, please visit sky.com slash katiestandingupforharvey.com.